Hey y'all, I am Julie with Julie's Designs and Signs and I have a passion for thrifting and I love taking those thrifted items and upcycling them. And I also love using Iron Orchid Designs to embellish and take my thrifted finds to the next level. And IOD has a brand new release with lots of new designs. Now I can't use all of them in this video. So at the end of the video, I will post pictures of all the stuff. So that way you can see everything new that IOD has to offer. And in the description, I will have a link where you just click on it and you put in your zip code. That way you can find and support a stockist nearest you. I think that y'all are gonna really enjoy these projects. So let's get started with the thrift flips. This is the village market mode. You get a cow, you get a sheep, and you get a pig. Plus, you get a cute little floral and wheat embellishment that you can add to your pieces. I am going to be embellishing this basket that I thrifted. I love the size on it, and the thick pieces of wood make it perfect to add a mold to. When you are using your mold, you want to make sure to dust it with some cornstarch. That way your clay doesn't stick to the mold and it'll release very easily. So for this basket, I'm going to be using the pig and the two flower embellishments and I'm going to be using IOD's air dry clay. All you do is you push your clay into the mold and the IOD molds have this micro rim so I just run my finger across the sides of the molds and all the excess just comes right off. It's so easy y'all. And then I flip my mold over and just kind of gently wiggle it and the clay pops right out. I want to give my molds a faux wood look. To achieve this effect, I'm just going to brush on some watered down antiquing wax. Now, if you want your molds to be a little bit darker brown, then you can leave them as is. But I want mine to be a little bit lighter and have a little bit more contrast with my basket. So I'm going to dab them with a paper towel after I apply the antiquing wax. Once I get my molds looking exactly the way that I imagine, I'm going to set them off to the side and just let the antiquing wax dry. They have been drying for about 30 minutes, so the antiquing wax is dry. However, the clay is not fully dried yet. I want to attach it to the basket while it is still just a little bit wet. That way I can really form it to the basket's shape. I'm going to be using Gorilla Glue to attach my molds to the basket. This is what I use all the time for my clay molds. Whether I glue them on while they're still wet or dry, it works out perfectly. So I'm just going to apply it to the back of the mold and then I like to kind of rub the glue with my finger and make sure it is on every part of the mold. And this also keeps the glue from dripping. It keeps you from having too much glue on your piece. So I'm gonna do this to all my pieces and then apply them to this basket. Also when using this glue, I like to let my pieces dry for 24 hours before touching them, them again. So once the glue is fully dry, this basket will be done. I picked up this little cutting board from a garage sale for 50 cents and I think it would look so cute embellished with the village market mode. I want to use the sheep and some of the wheat embellishments on this one. So I'm just going to add my cornstarch to the mold. Do not forget that step y'all and then I'm going to apply my IOD air dry clay and then, like I told y'all, you just simply rub off the excess with your finger. Very easy, very simple. Now, sometimes when you remove your clay from the molds, you'll have some rough edges. To fix this, guys, all you have to do is simply rub your finger along the edges of the clay and it cleans it right up. Now, I mainly just use clay in my molds. However, they are food safe and you can use resin and other materials in your molds as well. 
I laid out all my pieces on the cutting board like I want them to look. I ended up adding two pieces of wheat at the top. I just thought with the shape of the cutting board, that would look absolutely perfect. So now I'm just taking my Gorilla Glue and I'm going to glue all my pieces to the board and I'm going to let the clay and the glue dry overnight. To paint this board, I am going to be using Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Little Lamb, which I feel like is so fitting for this project. It is a very pretty gray color. I ended up putting one coat of paint on here, and then I had a few places that just needed a few touch-ups. And once my gray paint was dry, I wanted to add some white wax. White wax pairs so perfectly with the IOD modes because it really brings out all the details. So all you do is you paint your white wax on and then you take a dry paper towel or rag and then you just wipe it off. That white wax will not only bring out all the details of the mold, but it will also seal your piece. So once the white wax is dry, this piece is done. For these next few projects, I am going to be using the Whispering Willow Transfer, which may be one of the sweetest transfers I have ever seen. It is eight pages of cuteness, y'all. They have all these cute forest creatures and these mushrooms and all these amazing florals and leaves and they all have this beautiful watercolor look to them that I absolutely love. I always look for glass globes at a thrift store that I could turn into cloches and these are perfect and I only paid 50 cents each for them. There's so many options in this transfer, but for these two cloches, I decided to use this green sprig and also this beautiful blush pink piece. I like to tape my transfer onto my piece just using painter's tape and then I remove the white backer. That way, if it happens to move, I have the tape as reassurance. However, I can tell you on glass, transfers come off very easy. With all your transfers, you're going to get this little clear transfer tool and all you do is you rub that on top of your transfer and you'll be able to see it change colors as it comes off of that clear backer and then transfers onto your piece. Now, when you are removing your clear backer, you just wanna do it slowly. That way, if you have any areas that haven't transferred, you can just put it back down and rub your transfer tool over it. And then I like to just gently go over the transfer with my fingers, just making sure it is fully adhered to the piece. It looks absolutely beautiful on glass, but I have used transfers on so many different materials. And so far I have not found anything that a transfer will not stick to. It's kind of like the adult version of a sticker. Once you start using them, you will be addicted. I promise you will love transfers and they look so beautiful on absolutely everything. To turn these glass globes into a cloche, we need to add a topper. I have these brass doorknobs that fit perfectly on top of here, and I think the brass pairs perfectly with the transfers that I chose. So I'm gonna use a combination of hot glue and Gorilla Glue to attach these to the glass. Now you just wanna make sure you let it dry for 24 hours before touching it again. I thrifted this white metal canister. I think it's just an old popcorn tin, but I love the age on it and that it had both gold and silver trim. This transfer set has quite a few beautiful bird images in it. And I thought this white canister would be perfect to store my bird food in. I love feeding all the creatures in my backyard. So I picked out 
the bird print that I thought would look best on here and I am just going to apply it to the canister. Now when you first look at this transfer set you may think it's for a kids room but I do not think it is. I mean you could definitely use it for a kids room but there are so many other beautiful images especially the florals, the greenery, the birds, and the mushrooms. Look how beautiful this came out. I absolutely love this transfer set. After I applied the transfer, I then decided I wanted to add the words bird food to it. So I'm gonna be using the IOD letterpress stamp and also the IOD ink in the color stone gray. Now when you order a new IOD ink color, you want to make sure you also order an empty ink pad. And this will last a really long time, you guys. So when you use your stamp pad and you feel like it needs a little bit more ink, you simply just take out your little bottle of ink and apply a little bit more. Now this was my first time using this color and I didn't realize how light it looked. I thought it was not applying to the stamp but it was so if it looks kind of transparent and like nothing's happening that is how it is supposed to look and you'll see it transfers perfectly onto here now the wording was an afterthought so i know it's not going to be centered but i kind of wanted the words on each side of the tail of the bird so that's just how it came out now they only have one letter for the stamp. So I have to go back and do the OD at the end, no big deal. I just line it up on my thin mount and then apply it to the canister. And like I said, this was my first time using this stone gray color and I absolutely love it. So if you haven't tried this ink color yet, I highly recommend it. It's definitely going to be one that I will be using a lot in the future. I have this metal scooper that I use to scoop up my bird feed and put it into the bird feeder and I feel like it also needs to be embellished as well. So I'm going to cut out this beautiful blush pink sprig and I am going to transfer it on to the metal scooper. Everything that I applied a transfer to in today's video was round and as you can see I had no issues. It's very easy to apply these transfers to round surfaces and also go over the corners. I wanted it to come into the scooper a little bit and you just bend it right over and apply it on and it's really as easy as that you guys. This is IOD's Bella stamp and it is filled with beautiful embellishments. You have this larger piece that is actually two pieces. So you can use it together, you can use it separately. They have all of these little corner pieces, the longer piece and that beautiful circle medallion looking one. I absolutely love this stamp. I purchased these frames from the thrift store. I really like that they had the wood mat around it and I really liked the color that these frames were painted, although the paint drop was in pretty rough shape. So I decided just to make it look like it was supposed to be distressed. So I went around with 220 grit sandpaper and just sanded all the edges and that worked perfectly. It made it look like all the imperfections and the scratches in the paint were supposed to be there. And best of all, I did not have to repaint these frames. Now when you get a stamp for the very first time and you open it up, you want to take some 220 grit sandpaper and just very lightly scuff up the surface of your stamp. When it comes brand new, it is very thick and just kind of roughing it up a little bit really helps the ink adhere to your stamps and you only need to do this the very first time you open up your stamp. I'm going to be using IOD's black ink for this project and one of the corner stamps. The Bella stamp comes with several corner pieces in different sizes so you can pick out the one that fits with your project and this corner piece fits perfectly into the wood mat on this frame. So I'm going to just apply it to all the corners of the frame. I have my stamp on the very edge of my thin mount 
and that makes it so easy to just ink it up and apply it to each of the frames. I wanna add some artwork to my frames. So I'm gonna be taking some white cardstock paper and the round medallion piece from the Bella stamp. And I also wanted to have a little bit of a distressed look. So you can make your stamps look even more distressed by just very lightly inking them. So after I very lightly ink my stamp, I'm going to apply it to my paper. And now I have a piece of art that will match perfectly with my frame. This is IOD's Olive Crest Mode, and I really like this one because it has so many different embellishments that you can use on a bunch of different projects. So we're gonna start off with this old crusty pan. Y'all know I love picking up this kind of stuff at the thrift store. As you can see, I've already been loving and using this mold. Before you use your mold, you don't wanna forget to apply your cornstarch. This will help keep your air dry clay from sticking and it allows your clay to easily release from the mold. So you just take your clay and you press it into your mold and IOD has those micro rims. So all you have to do is just rub your finger across the edges of the mold and all the extra clay comes right off. Then you're gonna gently take your clay out of the mold. Now in the mold, this one is a semicircle. However, it is very thin and the clay is movable. So you can, you know, transform it into whatever you want. So actually this one, I want it to be a little bit longer and go around the pan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on top of the pan exactly the way that I want it to look and I'm gonna let it dry overnight on top of the pan. The reason I let this dry is because I knew I'd have a difficult time gluing it and getting the shape that I wanted without getting glue everywhere. I do not wanna paint this piece. I love the color of the IOD air dry clay. So sometimes I just leave it as is. So all I have to do is glue the clay on and this piece is done. purchase a set of three wooden containers at a garage sale for $3. Now, they look okay as is, but we are going to take it to the next level using the olive crest mold. I want to use the mold that is in the center. It kind of looks like a little label or a little frame, and I think it is going to be perfect to apply to the two square boxes. So I'm gonna make two of these labels using the IOD air dry clay and then using Gorilla Glue, I'm going to glue them to the boxes. Now these are glued on right away because they easily hold their shape. However, on the longer tray, I wanna use these kind of more frilly pieces on the side of the mold and just like the semicircle one, this one is more pliable. So I find with the more pliable, movable molds, I, let, I like to let them dry in place and then glue them down. I just find it so much easier. So honestly, it just depends on the project and on the mold if I let the clay dry before I glue it down or if I glue it down right away. So I'm just taking these two pieces of clay and I'm going to put them exactly like I want them to look on here and I'm going to let them dry and stiffen them up and then glue them. That way they stay exactly how I want them to be. My clay and my glue has dried overnight and now I'm ready to move on to the next step. I really wanna add some white wax to the entire piece. This wood is really rough, so I think white wax would just be perfect because it's really gonna stay in all the details of the wood and it also will kind of make it you know, blend in a little bit better with the clay since the clay is white. The white wax is going to add some white details to the box. 
So you simply just brush on your white wax and then you take a dry paper towel or rag and just kind of lightly wipe it off. I'm going to let the white wax dry for a little while before I move on to the final step. I want to apply a stamp to the little labels that I created on the boxes. I'm going to be using IOD's letterpress stamp. You get three different fonts in this stamp and they are the size that are perfect to embellish any piece. And I want to show y'all something with the thin mount. If you are stamping, I highly recommend ordering two thin mounts. One to keep in a large size and one to cut down so that you have all kind of different sizes of thin mounts to use for all your different products. Projects. It's going to make stamping so much easier. So I'm just going to use the number one and the number two and the black IOD ink and I'm going to just apply one stamp on each label and I think it's just the perfect little detail, the perfect little embellishment for this little wooden box set. guys I really hope that y'all enjoyed today's video please leave a comment below and let me know not only what was your favorite project but also what is your favorite new IOD design and don't forget to check the description below I'm gonna have a link so you can find a stockist nearest you y'all have a great day and I hope y'all enjoyed this video mm -hmm.